Today we're going to be learning about Pablo Picasso. So we're going to read a book here about uh, Pablo Picasso, Picasso's trousers, and get a little bit more understanding about some of his art and a little bit about who he is. And then we're going to create our own cubism self-portraits in the style of Pablo Picasso. So we're going to start off and begin with um, a sketchbook today and then we're going to dive right in by using a lot of construction paper, scissors, glue, and also a marker or a crayon to add some details. Okay, so a little bit about Pablo Picasso. He was born in 1881 and he died in 1973 at 92 years old. So he was a Spanish painter and a sculptor and he's most famous for developing cubism. He has a lot of famous artworks and he's most known for developing cubism alongside his friend and colleague, Georges Braque. Um, and so, you know, you can see a lot of his artwork and developing um, in colleagues and friends that he was with, as well as um, them being inspired by him. So his history is he began studying and creating art at a very young age because his father was also a painter and taught him how to do art until about the age of 11. And that's when his parents decided to encourage him to continue with his passion and they sent him to the best schools they could afford um, in order for him to practice getting better and being influenced by a range of modern artists um, and so forth to really help him with his symbolism and things that he enjoyed creating. So you'll see throughout his career that he relied on blues and gray palettes, um, he, which he ended up referring to as his blue period. Um, and so in that kind of mood, um, was about losing one of his close friends who passed away. Then he developed cubism and he learned from and was motivated by his friend Brock by producing these uh, most intense cubism paintings. So you'll see a lot of different things in how he was influenced in his grief and frustration and so forth in what he created, but he's most known for um, the cubism here. So I also wanted to show you is that here in Chicago, he has um, this one artwork, which is actually untitled, but it's believed to, if you look at today's um, time frame, it would be $2.7 million to make. And charities actually wanted to pay him for his labor and art skills, but he turned it down because he wanted to make it a gift. And the reason he did is it probably comes back to that Chicago was the first art museum in the United States to feature his work. And I do also know that one of his other pieces of artwork has sold for almost $200 million. So you can think about just how influential Pablo Picasso is. So now let's take a moment and just kind of look at these three portraits here and see an idea of what do you notice? And what can we take away after reading the book and learning a little bit more about Pablo Picasso? So now that we know a little bit more about Picasso and his Cubism movement, let's look at this worksheet and just really warm up our idea of how we're going to create a Pablo Picasso piece. So on here it says Picasso used a variety of shapes, lines, and colors to create his Cubism pieces. So we're going to follow the steps and examples below and practice making our own cubist cartoon character. And you can see all the different types of head shapes, eyes, nose, mouth shapes, etc. So in our step one box, I want us in here to draw any type of shape of a head. So you can copy one you see up there or just create your own wobbly wiggy, wiggly version. The next step says in step two that to divide the head with a curvy line. Now you could redraw it or I'm just going to draw on my side here and I'm just going to place a curvy line on my head. Wonderful. The last step says draw eyes, ears, nose, and a mouth, but make them in different sizes 
and uneven. Uneven means that they're not on the same. You know how we have one, we have our eyes are pretty much even on our head. What if you drew one down and one way above? That's kind of how Picasso did. It even says place some shapes outside of the head. So I want you to play with adding on your eyes. You can add ears, um, make a mouth, a nose, and just place them all wonky all over your face. And let's see what crazy Picasso cubist characters we come up with. Now that we've learned a little bit about Pablo Picasso, what I want us to do is create our own self-portraits today in his style of cubism. So you can notice I have a lot of different details on the paper by we're going to cut out a lot of different pieces of paper. So we'll make hats or different things that represent us on there. Hair, have our eyes could either be the same or they could be uneven, like one lower where a mouth would be and one way up high. And you can use your scraps and different things to make each feature on your face, or we could draw in some. So we're also going to work on doing a rubric on the back of this as well. And I'll show you exactly how to do that at the very end. So here's just another example where we have our hat, our face, our neck, and our shirt, and some ears. So the first thing we're going to start off with is this piece of orange paper. And what I want you to do is this is going to be our shirt for our character, is we're going to make three dots. So a dot at the top, okay, a dot near the middle on the left side and the right side. So once you have those three, we're going to connect them. You could connect them by drawing a straight line, or you could connect it by having a curved line. And remember that this is a Pablo Picasso style, so it doesn't really matter exactly how it comes out, as long as you're having fun and creating something different. So what we're going to do now is use our scissors and we're going to cut out the shape, but we're going to hold on to our scraps. So once you have it cut, I want you to put your scraps on a scrap side. But I wanted to also remind you, when you're cutting with scissors, the scissors always are staying straight. It's your hand that's holding the paper that turns. So put your scraps on the side, because we're going to use those again soon. And the next thing I want you to grab is a glue stick. I will be giving you a large 12 by 18 piece of paper, and we are going to glue our shirt piece onto our white paper at the very bottom of it so that way it fits nicely okay when you get your glue stick decide which side of your shirt that you would like to glue on and we're going to turn it up not where it's all the way up and all the glue stick comes out we just need a little bit so it doesn't get gooey and here's my trick with it you go around the outside edges and draw an X through the middle. That's all the type of glue stick parts that you need. And then you're going to smooth it down, just gently rub and massage that piece onto your paper. The next piece that we're gonna be creating is the neck. So what we're going to have is like a curved part and the sides a little bit. Um, you'll get a different color paper. It doesn't matter what one you receive because I think it just makes it more fun and diverse. So what we're going to do is at the very bottom with your pencil, I'm going to have you draw a U, and then we're going to draw a backward C and another kind of curve. You can always turn your paper, and it could be a straight line or wobbly line, it doesn't matter. So here, as I said before, as you cut, what you're going to do is save those scraps. And I'm always using my other hand to turn the paper. My scissors are never moving all over the place. Instead, it's my paper that's moving. And what I'm going to do is decide where do I want my neck to go? 
Do I want it really high? Do I want it really low where the shoulders are shrugged? Or do I want to have it in a spot that looks like the shirt is a little bit behind? Don't worry if your neck is too tall right now because we're going to make the head to put on that too. So remember when you go to use your glue stick, go around the outside of it and do an X in the middle and that way it sticks nice and place it wherever you would like it to go. For the next part of the head, I'm going to be giving you two pieces of paper, but we're only going to be tracing one of them. So I have these little oval templates and you can think about where you want to place it on your paper. So you could place it in the center or a little off to the center, depends on what's easiest on you. And what we're going to do is trace around the tracer like this. See how I have my hand in the middle of my tracer? I'm holding it down so that way I don't have it move too much. And once it's done, I'll have the collect the tracers back. And what we're going to do is use that second piece of paper and we're going to place our one on top of it. So put the purple right behind. I kind of tapped mine to put them together. But I do this so that way we can cut two pieces of paper at the same time. So as you're cutting, go nice and slow. Go around on the line. You're always cutting on the outside edge. And remember, you're turning the paper with your other hand. Not the scissors, but your other hand. If it ever gets to be too much, just trim off some of that bigger piece and start going on the rest of it. Remember to save your scraps when you're done. When we did our practice sheet, Remember how we drew a wavy line or a curvy line in the middle? We're going to do that same thing on our green piece of paper. So only on our green paper, I want you to start up at the top and draw a wavy or a curved line. You could kind of add in a nose line or a mouth line if you prefer. Once you've done that, I want you to only cut the green paper. This way, will make it easier when we go to put the head together. So again, you're only cutting one piece of paper this time. Try not to make your curvy line too difficult so it's easier for you to cut. If anything is too tricky, just design your own cut as you're going. Now I want you to take your pieces, your green piece, and decide which shape design do you like the best. Do you like the bigger one? Do you like the smaller piece? Do you like it on the right side? Or do you like it on the left side? It's completely up to you. Once you figure that out, take out your glue stick. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna glue that piece of paper onto the purple head shape. Now that we have that shape done, we're going to place our head shape onto our body. So think about, do you want it to be way up at the top of the neck? Do you want it to be lower so your neck is a little bit smaller? Do you want to have the head kind of tilted or really tilted? It's really up to you because this is your cubist Picasso design. So take your glue stick out again, go around the edges, and do a big X in the middle, just like we keep doing, and place the head shape wherever you want it on your piece. And then give it a nice little massage so that way it's stuck on there really nicely. The 
The next piece that we're going to create are the ears. So I have a piece of red construction paper for us, and what we're going to do is fold it in half. I like to fold it in half like a book, but if you happen to fold it in half like a hot dog style, that's fine too. What you want to do is really find that crease. So think about the crease is where your um, paper is going to stay together. So what I want to do is I want to not cut on the crease. I'm going to cut around it. If you find out that you cut on the or you didn't cut on the crease, those two pieces will be stuck together and you just cut down the middle. Simple as that. So here I've got two of the same shapes that I cut out and I realized I don't want them that big. So put the two pieces back together if you want and then you can cut them again until you get the shape and so forth that you really like. So once you have that, think about um, the shape that you're going for and think about where do you wanna place your ears? Do you want one up high, one down low, or do you want them the same on your paper? Again, use your glue stick and put those down where you like them. The next thing we're going to do is create the hat for our character. So think about what type of hat or style hat that you're looking for. I'm thinking of one of those artist berets and I'm going to create that on this yellow piece of paper. But if you're thinking of a baseball cap, you can draw that or you can just cut out some shapes. So I recommend the first thing using your pencil is to just draw the shape that you're thinking of cutting out. And you'll notice like I have all the extra pieces and all these extra things on the side. So if I really wanted to build my hat to go up like a cowboy hat or something else, I easily could do that. So start with a basic shape and then you can always cut another shape to place on top of that. And you'll notice here I decided to change my design a little bit and I just kind of cut that new design as I was going. So remember, keep all of those scraps because we're gonna be using that shortly. Once you have your hat cut out, then you can glue it onto your paper and figure out the style and how you want it to go. So I know usually those berets that artists wear tend to be a little bit tilted. So do the same thing we've always done and go around the outside, do an X in the middle and stick that on. If it's really small, then you can just do a little bit. The next thing we're going to work at is creating our eyes. So let's take a look at some of our scraps that we have and come up with folding our piece of paper and getting our eye shape. So here I'm just going to rip one of my scraps and I'm going to fold it in half and it depends on however the size is that you want. So look at your, your scraps and see what fits best. And then I'm just gonna cut out a shape. Now what you can do is you can draw it first and then cut it, or you can just do the shape as you go and moving your scissors. So the fun part about this is that you can place them any which way you could face it one going up and down if you want to keep them on the same sides of your face. You could put one eye way down low and one way up high. It's up to you. There's no wrong way on doing this. So once I stick those on there, I'm also going to grab another color. And I'm going to do the same thing, but even smaller. And I'm going to fit that inside my yellow shape of the eye. So we're going for three colors inside of our eye. The next color is gonna be used with my marker. So once that done, we're going to go through 
and add in just a few different pieces with um, my marker shape here. So I'm gonna give the inside of eye, my eye, the pupil, I'm gonna do my dot there. And I'm also gonna add in eyebrows, maybe eyelashes if I want. And then I'm going to go in and trace my original cut that I created. So you can create your eye shapes and designs any which way that you would like. And as an option, you can go in and retrace that line that you drew and cut, I should say too, uh, in your face. And so then you can go in and you can either draw your nose shape and your mouth, or you can cut different pieces of paper to create the mouth and the nose shape. So remember that original sheet that we were using to create our Picasso uh, caricatures? Here you can go through and use any one of them if you want and add them on as well as the mouth in a weird fun way. The beauty about this is if you make a beautiful oops, you can always cover it. See here, if I don't like that, I can go and cover it with a piece of scrap. So here I'll just grab a scrap paper and I'm gonna turn it into my own beautiful oops. After you've done your face, what I want you to start thinking about is you can add in different things for your hair. You could also add on a mustache. You could add, you know, some other various things and I uh, to your hat and so forth. So for me, I'm since my marker is out at this time, and remember, we're only using the marker to add the details to the eyes, um, draw a nose if you want to, and add your hair. That's the only few places that we are adding in um, the marker. So here I'm drawing in my bits of hair. If you don't want to add a hair at all to your character, you can um, just start using your scraps and adding in some designs for your uh, t-shirt or adding more pieces of paper and designs on your hat or even some different fun things like earrings or um, making anything you could imagine on your ears and the rest of your face. So here I'm just drawing some lines and I'm going through and just adding in some black and white pieces just to make my character stand out a little bit more. So why don't you take this time now to finish up any of the details on your face. If you want to use paper for your hair, you can use paper and just use those scraps and glue those on or you can draw in some. For this last part, I want you to explore and have some fun with adding your own decorations and things on your character and your self-portrait. So using your scraps, think about what do you want to add? You could add patterns, you could add words and different things only using paper. So we're not drawing anything, but I want you to use those scraps and think, what should I put on my shirt? So what details do you think I should add? So let's take a look at a couple examples here. These are student examples too, where they used only paper in order to add in their fun details. So think about cutting out your favorite shapes like hearts or squares. And when you cut those out, add another layer on top of it. 
like maybe on here you can see just on this one on the right I there's yellow added on top of the purple so take this time now to really play with what pictures stand out to you and exactly what you want to add. Do you have a favorite sports team? Do you just want to cut some lines and add those different shapes and scraps on there? But put one color on top of another and see what you can create. 